what image comes to your mind when you hear the word education? There's a classroom, a teacher standing in front of a blackboard, and the students all facing the same direction toward the teacher. The older you are, the more likely you possess such a strong image of an old-fashioned classroom. Nowadays, an increasing number of students are using tablets and work in groups and I'd understand setting uh, in their hands. Yet, the fundamental design of school pedagogy has not changed so drastically. I have been advocating Lanology for the la last 30 years. Probably you've never heard of this word. It's okay. I coined this term, Lanology, in 1993. It is a science of lifelong, life-wide, and life-deep learning. The concept of learning is much broader than school education and almost synonymous with your life. We can learn anything, anytime, and anywhere. And it starts from how to define human beings. I define human beings as homo discans, learning species. In biology, we define ourselves as homo sapiens. We are thinking animals. In economics, we are homo economics. These definitions are just fine, but I believe that defining human beings as learning species is more fundamental and more universal, starting from the moment of birth to the very last breath of life. Human beings continue learning. Look at this diagram. In Japan, being a centenarian is no longer a dream, but is becoming a reality. Fortunately, Japanese people enjoy one of the longest lifespans in the world, and you can assume a 100-year life expectancy. The horizontal axis represents age. The lower left corner is your birth, and 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 years old. The vertical axis represents the time of the day. The top is 0 o'clock midnight, the center 12 at noon, and the bottom is 12 midnight. In this rectangle, the school period occupies only this small area. Many schools start at 8.30 in the morning and finish at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. If you go to a four-year university, you graduate from it at the age of 22, typically speaking. Isn't this red box surprisingly small? Of course, uh, if you look at closely, there are many streets and gaps Saturday, Sunday, national holidays, summer vacation, winter vacation, spring vacation. Learning within this red box is extremely important. As a universal professor, university professor, I have to emphasize this one. But uh, we should not stop learning there. After you get a job and start working as a member of the company, you will continue learning on the job. You need to develop professional skills such as sales, accounting, construction, human resources, planning, manufacturing, quality control, and so on, so forth. As a member of the community, you may be engaged in a variety of volunteer activities, helping senior citizens and clearing beach and uh, planting trees and uh, uh, vegetables, just for example. These are not just limited to school education, such as math and science, social studies, English and Japanese, but including a much wider range of topics. If you're married, there is a series of challenges uh, on cross-cultural communication. You know what I mean. Thank you for nodding. Uh, to maintain peace at home, it is essential to have a uh, good set of house rules. When people from uh, different cultural backgrounds start living together, they may get upset with small trivial things, such as how often do you wash bus towels and how to fold them? Where to place them can be a reason for quarrels. 
how many days do you keep your leftovers in the refrigerator? That's the important. Uh, how to spend uh, time on vacation, uh, how to prioritize your spending money, which schools do you uh, send your kids to? These are very, very important things, but uh, sometimes the set of house rules are not fixed. And uh, these rules are the basis for collaboration and living peacefully and happily at home. This is a matter of survival. However, such important things in life are not taught at all in the red box of schooling. Parenting is more difficult than driving a car. Everyone who has experienced it knows this truth. To get a driver's license, uh, most Japanese go to a driving school, attend lectures, and actually get behind the steering wheel where to uh, practice driving maneuvers and take the exam. However, when it comes to child rearing, a great number of people become parents without sufficient preparation. In Japan, men's lack of ability to, care, to take care of children is a major social problem. Particularly, the most important principle in child rearing is not shared among parents. What is that principle? Children do not behave as their parents expect them to. On a quiet night, you want to keep windows open, but babies start crying loudly. <laughs> on a day you put new clothes on them, they spill food and make a mess. Everyone who has gone through this knows this fact. But without this knowledge, some people harm children by neglect or domestic violence. That's very, very sad. Tolerance, empathy, and cross-cultural sensitivity, and collaboration as a basis for happy life. If other people don't behave as you desire them to, still we need to find ways to compromise and attain peace. But conflict resolution or non-violent non communication is not taught at school. Let us not limit our definition of education to the confines of traditional schooling. Instead, let us embrace the concept of lifelong, life-wide, and life-deep learning and recognize that a variety of learning can take place in any setting at any age. By doing so, we can create a more inclusive and dynamic society where individuals are empowered to reach their full potential. I also want to emphasize that learning is not a solitary activity. We've been taught to believe that solving problems alone is the only way to succeed. You do this when you take the exam, but this mindset is flawed. When we face difficulties in life, we should never, never, never suffer alone. Instead, we should embrace our ability to collaborate with others. Working together in harmony is one of the most powerful traits of human beings. Individually, we may be weaker than tigers, lions, wolves, or elephants. But uh, through our learning and communication skills and the ability to work in teams, we have secured our status as the most dominant species on the planet. Unfortunately, our current education system is based on an individualistic model. This has led to many students feeling demotivated or disengaged. They are expected to excel in all subjects, even if they have no interest in them. This can cause them to hate the subject even more badly, leading to a vicious cycle. But once you enter the real world, you don't have to be good at everything. You can delegate some tasks to others who are better suited to them. And if you are really excellent at just one or two things, you can still survive and be very, very successful. In today's age of generative artificial intelligence, such as ChatGPT or BARD, the abilities measured by paper tests will become increasingly obsolete. We must adapt to this new reality and focus on developing skills 
uh, that are uniquely human. By observing and experiencing the world around us with all five senses, we can gain a deeper understanding of our environment, the mother nature. By reflecting on our past mistakes and successes, we can develop strategies to cope with future challenges. We must overcome our differences and work towards a common goal. Let us not compare ourselves to others, but compare with our own past selves. And let's strive to improve ourselves and create a better world for all species, not just for humankind. It starts with each and every one of us setting our own goals and committing ourselves to lifelong, life-wide, and life-deep learning. And my ultimate goal is to create a vision of learning planet. The United Nations unanimously designated 17 goals called Sustainable Development Goals. You are now familiar with this word. At the UN General Assembly by 2015, this was a major step forward. Unfortunately, however, we will not be able to achieve all of these goals by 2030. So what are the humanity's goals after that? It has not been fixed yet. So I propose, let's create a vision of learning planet 2050. We need to learn anything, anytime, and anywhere. We need to learn from nature, history, and cultural diversity. We need to learn collectively and harmoniously. So I challenge you to start your own learning journey today. How about setting your own personal, I mean, your own house rules today and committing to renewing our personal best every day? After all, the planet us is our own home we need to cherish. Thank you very much.